Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, host Imperial Dean. Featuring today a two versus two on Moscow outskirts. Yes, indeed, Moscow outskirts. We shall be watching Play CK and Mr. T98 tank fighting for the Soviets, fighting for the 3 and 32nd rifle division. Opposing them shall be Predators and Spanky. Taking on the fight for the 3rd SS Panzer Division, Torten Cup rolling ahead, trying to conduct a breach into Soviet lines and possibly throw back the Bolsheviks. Buying more respite for the entire German army, but will they succeed in their endeavor or shall the 332nd spurred on by the NKVD and the stern blick of Comrade Stan? Blick. Stern stare. Damn it, I used Danish there, but either way, hold on the Soviets. We shall find out, we shall find out. We are seeing here with the quick built infantry company with single grenade squad MG for being followed up there by predators. We also see the infantry company up for spanking, but he's also getting several pioneers and immediately rushes them into the initial church right up there. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, small engagement here between the pioneers and the combat engineers, holding the combat engineers a bit at bay. Conscripts advancing rather far on the western front of the company is there, quickly going to secure the fuel point right there in the far west, whereas we are seeing predators making a slightly more slow run towards the victory point right there. Grenadiers advancing up, MD-42 ready for predators, we might see some more grenadiers out soon. Definitely not be a bad idea, and there we go, second grenadier squad. And there we go, a Grenadier Squad out there for Spanky, followed up by a second Grenadier Squad. Conscripts out here versus first squad of Grenadier... Con Conscripts versus Grenadiers. Grenadiers are definitely holding the advantage due to the ha them having heavy cover, the Conscripts only having a wooden cart. Which generally never were known for their sturdiness. And there we go, Engine Quartz, you're going to get rushed by the Conscripts. Well, the MG4 Drew Webb is set up, and there we go, opening up by the... Ah, the Conscripts, ooh roaring. Don't quite make it past and set they do get sort of caught in front. And then the Grenadiers move into pretty much finish off the job. And there we go, Molotov straight on the MG Cream, neatly burning it up. Oh, the viciousness. In this case, Predators was a bit too cocky. In this meantime, yes, and Grenadiers versus another conscript squad of North Comedy. And he is fighting from the church. Nasty stuff here and there. Spanky name on guns. We're seeing a Molotov going off here on the Grenadiers, quickly burning them up in seconds. My god! I mean, just. Just note how quickly that entire Grenadier squad vanished to a single Molotov. Absolutely nasty stuff. And we do see another Molotov here being launched straight at the Grenadiers. Conscript pushing up here. And once more, Spanky's Grenadiers find themselves on fire. Grenadiers here need to get out of there, quickly recruiting. Low on men, trying to get that MG42. More conscripts moving up, getting stopped there by the Molotov. But we. By the MG42, but another Molotov goes off. So much fire being launched at the Germans, and looks like they are fully retreating. While this conscript squad needs to get. Out. Oh, never mind. Vasily took a bullet to the head. Conscripts and the pioneers and companies finding up here. Conscripts marching towards the right hand side. MG42 being rushed in by Spanky, but already the German front is in tatters. Heavy losses have already been inflicted. Great and vicious use of Molotovs by both Soviet players, really giving a headache to the Germans, impeding the initial assault. Definitely making it very, very painful. And another one, but in this case they slightly misjudged. In this case the Grenadiers will maybe hold the advantage, at least for a bit. Though they are already low on health. Which is definitely not so good for them. Small engagement up here. Conscript running strange on MD42. Although we do see a Molotov. All in this case, the MD42 is quick to run out. We are seeing pioneers moving up to support. So far, looks like the Germans are trying to stick together, making for a center right push. Seemingly, they are slightly ignoring the left, realizing they have to slightly work more coordinated to overcome the Soviet hordes. Otherwise, they do risk again getting singled out with Molotovs and whatnot, and simply. Wiped out, which is definitely not to their advantage. Also, note here we're seeing Festung armor, Festung support, and Jäger armor doctrines up for predators. Two MG42s to support the advance of predators and his grenadiers, and just tearing through the conscripts. 
In the meanwhile, looks like we are seeing an advance up here. Pioneer's getting caught in the barbed wire field. MD42 going to set up to stop the advancing conscript. And there we go. Quickly getting cut down. Grenadiers moving out as well. MD actually pulling back just in case. And there we go. Most of lot, but in this case, he was quick enough to spot what was going on. He was being a bit telegraphed. Telegraphed right there. And there you go, the MD42 once more turns back, absolutely tearing through. The conscripts pinning them to the ground like bugs. And the meanwhile, Gunner is pushing up here. Conscript squad on its own, coming under intent. MD42 firing again. The impetus of the 3rd SS are f finally working their way. Flamethrower Pioneers also ready to support. Although the right and left side are still Soviet. Conscript squad hiding in the house, but looks like they have other plans for now. Might want to try and reconnect at least some of the territory. Although they will need to get this back on this if they want to get any of the fuel right there. So if the Germans can hold up this area, they can actually cause quite a bit of damage to the Russians. Right hand side and the fuel right there is on the other hand considerably less well guarded by the Germans and they probably should try and extend something so they actually can get some bleeding fuel. Let's go look at this spanky man with three grenadiers, squads, two pioneers, MD. He's going for assault support, calling in an orbital blitz cargo truck. Although I would rather prefer if we saw an orbital blitz, which could be used to transport troop reinforce, possibly upgrade to an ambulance. I think that would have been a bit more interesting. Tactically and strategically, anyways. Pioneers are getting pushed away. Conscript push going up on the right side. Scout cart for Placey Case. He's going for the special rifle command. His teammate going for the support weapons. Campanea. And there we go. Conscript's pushing half the right side. We are seeing a counter attack force moving in. MD holding up the wooden church. A few conscripts in the center. Russians need to regroup and counter attack instead of just sending in troops one at a time. It's not quite working out for them. They're splitting themselves up to a nice German counter attack, which is currently happening, courtesy of Spanky and Predators left and right. And there we go, Rifle Nades going off. But at the same time, Scout Car with Flame first pushing in, burning away at the machine gun crew, could even take it away. And there we go, the MG has been decrewed. Nasty, nasty. At the same time, though, a nice counter attack going in by the Russians here. Actually catching off a few units, then in fact clearing out the Grenadier squad somewhere. Although we also do now see the MG42 being upgraded for some of the Grenadiers, that's definitely going to help. Although he probably should consider upgrading for the second M Grenadier squad as well. Pioneers finding away, conscript slowly advancing. Grenadiers finding over here, getting burnt away by the Scout squad. Grenadiers need to get away. And oh, they did get the Scout cast small victory right there. But the MD-42 still looks like it's going to fall into the hands of the Russians over 3 and 4 to second. Rav Division in the meanwhile, Conscript Squad going for the MD-42. Do get up a Molotov, but at the same time they're pinned and are going to be pushed away. Heavy fighting continues over here. MD-42 out of the way, cannot. And the MD-42 is lost to the Russians. Very nice of that. Grenadiers continue to fight here. Conscripts are getting overwhelmed. The Grenadiers already with 6 kills. And there we go, the MD-42 opens up, tearing through the Conscripts. In the blizzard, the conscripts absolutely have no chance in a one-on-one -on -one with an MG42 equipped Grenadier squad. And there we go, both rushing for the fireplace. But the Grenadiers definitely have the advantage here, and the conscripts need to get out of there. They're so low on health, so low on health. And there we go, the MG just tearing through them. And there we go, conscript squad wiped out. Not a single man alive except him, and he's probably not going to live for a lot much longer. More over blitzers. Spanky spending an awful lot of resources on these, which means he won't be getting any combat troops anytime soon. We're also seeing a support armor core going up for him. We're seeing a bunker going up. Oh, he accidentally got himself the command bunker, which is pretty much useless in the base. So he's probably going to get a medic bunker to supply both players. That's a good move. Still, Russians are holding most of the map. They're holding most of the victory points, and they're also getting some munition caches up. That is good. And a fuel cache. Also good. Mortar set up. Field guns moving out, conscripts moving out, several machine guns moving out. Interestingly enough, Plazy Gay's not really using his special rifle command to say get some more elite infantry, and he in fact could get guards infantry, which could be used to support an assault, hold lighter vehicles at bay, and you know, just get up some grenades and light machine gun fire, so. 
I do feel that's a missed opportunity right there by Play CK. Third Orbit Blitz arrives. Machine Gun in the church getting mortared now. And let's go have a look at Play CK. That's going for the Guards Rifle. Already access to hit the dirt. The Guards Rifle Infantry and Light Machine Gun. Uh, Sub Machine Guns will probably be equipping as many of his conscripts as possible. And then we go back to the two conscripts got from T98 Tank. Advancing in straight into intense machine gun fire from a lot of Grenadiers and other things. And they are quickly pushed away. But there we go, conscript squad flanking. MG42 suppressing the defenders. Nicely done. Although the attacking conscripts are running into problem. Really, really nasty stuff. Their mortar went off, but the conscripts are pushed away. Pack blasting away in the hopes of catching some sort of Bolshevik in the face. Right hand side falling quickly, shifting sides. In fact, quite a lot. Apparently, is being made some minor gains, but are quickly run off again. And we do see Pioneer Squad here advancing, but they are very much cold and could die from hypothermia any moment. More mortifying going into the German support positions, forcing them away from the front line. And no real counter-attack force at the moment, which is just definite shame right there. And we do see a half-track rolling out for... Play CK. That should be fun. You could also consider getting a tank or two to hit the flanks. That definitely cause some problems for the Germans. And there we go. Vaulting over cover again. I mean, vaulting is actually a nice little position in this case, allowing them to flank the MG42 quite nicely. Good job there, Heinz. Saving your pants again, dear brothers. Caught in the middle of it. Except it's, in this case, didn't really do much, forcing the MG42 into the house. And we are seeing a half tech going to pull up with an awful lot of flamethrower engineers in it. And there we go. Loads of fire being poured down on the Russians. And the Panzer is pushed off as well, and they go down. The Inferno cannot be escaped, comrade. Conrad Stalin has decreed it. Austin Flak Panzer though, has been rushed out there by Spanky to hold up the front line. And there we go, Conscripts attacking the pack. 40, and there's absolutely nothing to support it. MGs though are being rushed in. Combat Indianers, Grenadiers, or Pioneers, I mean. Everything just being pushed forward in a desperate bit, but looks like the pack is overwhelmed. MG42 stopping up there, but the pack can still be secured, and it is. Conscripts getting stopped though. And just both MGs fighting here from behind a frozen stack of hay, just unleashing torrents of bullets. And there we go, the scout car rushing ahead. And there's not really going to be much to stop it. And there we go, again, washing over the Grenadiers with fire. Righteous fire. Rifle grenades going up, not really doing much. Panzerfaust likely to go off. Veterans do one of the company squads in there. And there we go, the Grenadiers retreating. The MG42s are going to get washed over the flames. Grenadiers, more Grenadiers rising in from Spanky, and I meant, nope, just Spanky's Grenadiers. Flame throw again, just watching over them. And there we go, the Ospin arrives. This half tank has not a single chance in hell. And there we go, the half tank is gone, out of control. Absolutely nasty stuff, nasty stuff. More mortar rounds. German counter attack in process, but again, getting stopped by the MD42. Now, Veterans 1, which actually would allow it to fire. Incendiary armor piercing round for really terps on the Germans. As a fun note. Conscripts doing what they can, but the Soviet support positions are going to be forced a bit back. And we are seeing a nice flank going in here from Spanky's Austin going to try and hit the pack side. And there we go, Grenadiers push weight, but at the same time the pack has been decrewed, opening up for the Austin to do some nasty stuff. Anti-tank grenade goes off, destroying the engine, at least damaging it. Very nasty. Conscripts actually going to recruit the pack. But it is being stopped by the MB42. A very desperate defense right here by the Soviets, by Play CK. He turns the pack though, and he hits it. He gets the Ospin. He might even wreck it. The Ospin now can't really do much against the front of the pack with its gun shield. Although we do see Fedorov going down. Veterans you won for the pack already. Main gun destroyed. This Ospin is toast. Come on, one more shot. And there we go, the Ospin goes down. Field gun probably assisting a bit. Or getting blasted a bit. 
further finding on the right flank again. The Germans are having a bit of trouble. They're having quite a bit of trouble, in fact. Part of because they're running straight into the MD-42. No real great flanking attempts by the Germans. Strafing run going on here on the right-hand side. And also, I mean, Predator seems to be a bit limited in what he can do. He's not upgrading his Grenadiers. He's not getting, say, MDs. He's not going for Jaeger Infantry to increase the fighting power that way. I mean, there's not really much from him as such. He's not taking up either. He's relying on a lot of infantry, but he's not getting infantry support weapons, which could multiply the strength of his troops. And now we see Spanky with a Panzerwerfer. And in the meanwhile, his Grenadiers are counting up on the right hand side under support from the Luftwaffe. But still, the Russians hold most of the map, they hold most of the victory points. And a lot of veteran troops for Place EK also lost quite a few. And looking over here. Oh! Oh, I thought that was an IG 152 just briefly, but he has gone for that doctrine. That grants him it. He's also got some veteran infantry, but he's actually lacking in infantry. In fact, both Soviet players might want to consider getting at least one squad of infantry more. And again, I would suggest that Place EK actually gets a guards infantry squad, just one. There you go, Pantagon is advancing. Immediately coming under fire. Conscripts rushing straight at them. Perhaps not the best idea. As the assault rifles do tear through them. Half track flying away with the corp mount. Field gun firing away in support as well. Blasting the German positions. And a bit of Panzer Werfer fire right here from Spanky, actually doing a bit of damage, wounding the MD crew, increasing its arm action, making it tougher. And there we go, Grenadier counterattack might secure the field gun. That would definitely pay off in the meanwhile up here. The SU 5 moving in, not quite doing a lot since it's a tank destroyer with no real machine guns at all. So perhaps not the most effective thing. But based on the T-34 chassis and equipped with a high velocity gun, it did quite well. There was of course also the 100mm variant, which did better, though it was slightly overloaded. And last it could be considered a bit like the Yacht Panzer IV and its upgraded variant. And there we go, field gun recruit the half-track with the A guns pulled too close to the front. Very, very reckless play right there by Play CK. Definitely should have not have been that close, I would say. Definitely way too close, definitely got knocked out for his sins. And we do see, oh, field gun was so close, but no T-98 tanks. Machine gun took it out, clearing out the crew. What a shame right there for the Third Reich. And the th Third SS continues its advance. Lots of Panzer Grenadiers, Grenadiers, machine guns, assault rifles being pushed in. Assault gun out there for the Russians. And the tank destroyer out there needs some repairs, by the way. And we do see a Stug out for Spanky. With a 75mm Stuck Sturmkanone, the most produced armoured fighting vehicle in the German army. Although the Panzer IV was a very close second, and we're talking about a margin of about 100 of them being built. Also, really fun fact, the Russians were actually incredibly impressed by the Stuck III when they encountered it. In fact, they were so impressed that after... I believe it was the Battle of Stalingrad or some other large armor battle where they actually ended up with a lot of Panzer Freeze in some s different states of destruction. They actually set about creating their own Stug using old Panzer Freeze and then basically bits of T-34 as sort of the main, you know, assault gun bit there, the gun. Actually quite interesting. What's even more interesting is the Germans actually captured some and then used them again as assault guns. So fun little fact there, more field guns pushing up there, and the assault gun also functioning right there in the field artillery bit there. The rifle division clearly entering into God of War mode, which is rather what they had rather nicknamed their artillery, the God of War, simply because the Soviets were then amassed so much artillery again they could absolutely shatter everything. On the other hand, the Soviets were never really tactically good with artillery. They were more, you know, planning ahead and then blowing away and then not quite so much after that. Also fun fact about that, the Germans actually tried to recreate a bit that system, at least the volume, but they never quite could. 
But there we go, I think the conscript squad, and there we go, we actually see finally some coordinated assaults going on there by the Germans. It's a bit sort of been slapdash for the larger part, but here we go, we see a nice focused assault going in from Spanky. Several gun squads, pioneers with flamethrowers, followed up by Stooks, although the Stooks actually need to keep up. Come on, Spanky, support your infantry. On the other hand, we're not quite seeing that for Predators. In fact, he's got field guns, packs, MGs, but nothing besides that, and his troops are dying. He needs to get something to support, and he's still not chosen a doctrine. I mean, considering the way he currently plays, I'd actually suggest he goes for first strong support, use the mortar half track to support his advance, use smoke bombs, and then use relief infantry to you know, soak up some of the losses he's going to suffer. Perhaps get himself some artillery of his own. And in fact, note right here, we do see a 152mm heavy howards are right there for the Soviets. Definitely going to cause some problems for the Germans, for the fascists. Salt gun pushing up. Manet going off the field gun. Tank destroyer rolling in, but the field gun is getting recruited. I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to hit with his own field gun, but the tank is also getting caught. We're seeing a strafing run going in from the Soviets. And we're seeing a strafing run going in from the Russians. The aircraft is just flying past each other. Pack firing away at the same time. More strafing run getting a panzer gun squad on the retreat. Absolutely devastating. Stooks are being rushed in by Spanky to support his teammate. And there we go. More strafing runs just tearing through the gun crews. Murdering them and the MG crews. Absolutely devastating. Stook holding up here with the machine gun in the church. But again, the other Stook's not doing anything. Come on, Spanky. Into the fight. Into the fight for the Fatherland. Meanwhile, the MG being held up here. More artillery going in. Immer mehr artillery. Another storm gets which rolling out for Spanky. Which giving him three. A field gun right here in an absolutely appalling condition. Stooks are advancing. Oh, they're actually taking hits right here from the field gun. Veterans won, by the way. Oh, gets the crude, gets the crude. Stook flanking it, but Stook coming under fire from Soviet artillery. We also take a choose you. <coughs> My pardons. Field gun, though, getting recruited again. Blasting away might get the Stooks. Stooks should not be attacking a field gun like that from the front. That's actually incredibly dangerous. Although the lower crew. Oh, they get it. They wreck it. They wreck it. That was still bloody close. They could have lost one assault gun. Mortars running away. Contract being pushed away by Predators. Infantry assault on the far west flank. Oh, the victory point there is falling to conscripts. Oh, again, the Soviets need a bit more conscripts. And they also need to conduct some more properly coordinated assaults. Because the problem is a bit more slapdash from them at the moment. It's just, you know, we throw in what we have. There's no real coordinated assaults. Just firing artillery at the other bastards, hoping it kills them. And just pushing forward the front from time to time. And again, Predators really need a doctrine. And again, I think the doctrine would suit him most would be the Festung support. Would rather play out to his infantry-based tactics. I mean, either that or he should go for Jaeger infantry. If he'd chosen that. Grenadiers making the advance, but we might see any artillery going out. No! Oh, bombing run! Kills a Grenadier squad from Spanky, almost wraps out a Pioneer squad. Nasty job right there, SG85 moving up. Grenadier's a little troll, though. It looks like they did get off a Panzerfaust. Mortar continues to bombard the fascists. Still going to move in a flank. And there's nothing to support. Again, there's a lack of tank destroyers. Particularly because Plazy K is just going for lots of heavy howitzers. There's again a lack of coordination and also lack of support. A tank destroyer should not be sent in on his own, in particular not a Soviet one. As they were definitely not designed with that in mind. And there we go, the Stooks quickly sorted out, so they should also be careful. Katrusha rockets going in, and Predators is just getting mauled by Russian artillery and infantry. Really some heavy losses being inflicted right there on him. Conscripts moving towards the right hand side. The Soviets are still holding most of the victory point, which is definitely a bit of a problem for the Germans. Also, looks like the Russians are bombarding the German base for some curious reason. Not really hitting much, which is definitely to the advantage of the Germans. Stoog's operating on the right flank. A bit on his own. They have to be careful. They have to be very careful. 
If the Russians were to disable them with anti-tank grenades, we could then see a quick swoop in with some tank destroyers or some such tracks to clear them out. Or even a tank. More field guns, more machine guns, more everything guns. And it's actually time for the mid-game analysis. The current situation is a bit not so good for the Germans. They're a bit lacking infantry, or at least Predator's got plenty of infantry, but he's lacking something to support them. Spanky's not so much. He's got plenty of stuff to support the infantry, but he's not got a lot of infantry, and they're sort of a bit working on in their own, which can be alright, but again, there's nothing wrong in having two different forces that can work in different ways doing different missions, but the problem is Predator's force is definitely weaker because it's lacking something to support it. He's lacking something like a mortar, mortar half-track, packs, you know, something, or just some grenadiers, some flamethrower punnies, just something a bit extra. He can't just keep pushing up panzer grenadiers and hope that's going to lead to victory. Again, I think Festung support would be the most beneficial. It would give him some relief infantry again if used properly, thus giving him something to hold other territory, you know, perhaps place some of the building up here, you know, to hold up the communists for a bit. Spangy, on the other hand, needs more infantry to support his, you know, weapons. He's upgrading his grenadiers, all right, but again, he's not really coordinated properly with his stews. That's actually a bit of a larger problem. Again, he's just sending his infantry, and then he's not supporting it with his armor specifically meant for this uh, supporting infantry. I mean, that's just not really good at all. So again, some slight problems there in how the Germans use the tools for the Russians. On the other hand, we're Definitely also seeing some larger problems. Again, it's very much more piecemeal throwing in units here and there. It works okay in infiltrating the German lines and sometimes something back, but again, if the Germans were to make a coordinated attack at any stage, I mean, it's going to absolutely blow them away and pretty much wreck them. Because again, they don't have anything that can actually hold back to a coordinated assault. It's very much, very thinly held, very much barely held, which is definitely not to their advantage. So what the Russians need to do What the Russians need to do if Fraps will allow me to move my camera up there is one of them needs to continue feeding the front line. I mean they need to, one of them just needs to, you know, keep acting like a whipping boy. Basically, I mean it's not the most glorious part of the job, but it needs to be done, and then one of them builds up a small cohesive assault force and then actually pulls off a proper Assault, I mean, moves in, do some damage, take out some more vulnerable German units, really forces them back, because again, if one of them was to do that, I mean, the, again, the Germans wouldn't be able to hold on, in particular if they attack Predator's side, because again, Predator's is absolutely vulnerable to armor. I mean, he's got nothing, he's got a single guy who can fire off a panzer valve, he's got no panzer wrecks, no nothing. So again, if Plazy K was to just get a few T-34s out from his tank of the battalion command, and then send out some conscripts, perhaps a guard's infantry squad, and then attack Predator's side of the map. I mean, Predators would be absolutely hammered and forced to fall back. That would force Spanky to fall back, pull in, and try to support his side, which again would mean his side would be very much vulnerable to then a counterattack by his T-98 tank and just push through there. But again, currently that's not happening. It's a bit more slapdash. Again, it's just basically, keep feeding the front line, comrades. We shall win. Somehow, just keep firing artillery at them, and again, that's another problem for Place EK. He's got two howitzers, but again, you know, he's not getting any armor, and the Soviets need at least a bit more armor to support their assaults. I mean, they don't even have any tank destroyers at the moment because they send them in acting like they're tanks, which they're not. Again, just because it has any tank in it, if it has something else like, say, tank destroyer, it instantly means it's not a tank. Fun little rule of thumb there. But again, that's also partly a bit from the Russians. But what either side needs to do is basically regroup and counterattack because both sides are currently way too spread out and having way too much. It's really just a huge skirmish going on right now. Both are really intermingled. They're not quite having any sort of real cohesiveness. And again, Predator, and it's really the only thing that's currently saving Predators right now is the fact that his Soviet opponents are so utterly dispersed and fragmented that they can't launch a sensible counterattack against him again with armor because again any armor would absolutely wreck him. Let's go look at Spanky then. Let me turn to him again who's doing a bit better but again he's lacking in infantry. He needs more infantry. On the other hand he's got a Panzerwerfer to support. He's got Stugs. I mean he's got everything he needs to you know properly support an infantry assault. Also fun fact and I'll just briefly pause to 
sort of explaining this. I mean, the current force that the Germans are running actually rather nicely describes one of the sort of two primary types of a Kampfgruppe a German Panzer Division would split into. Usually had one composed of all the armored Panzer and their troops with tanks in it. I mean, there were three basically. One sort of two smaller ones than the larger one. The one they're currently going for here is the larger one, which would usually be all the Panzer and the trucks, would then just mount, of course, before, then supported by a single battalion of tanks. Usually, then it would be, you know, assault guns, perhaps some heavier armor, and then, you know, artillery and all that of the softer kind, you know, no self propelled artillery, really, perhaps some Panzer weapons. And that seems, I mean, it actually rather nice to reflect, you know, one type of comfortable with the Germans would have been. The other one would have been armored half tracks, Panzers. The third one would have been. Re Armoured reconnaissance troops, basically reconnaissance troops, and then supported by the tank destroyer battalion, usually the more self propelled bits. But the train to the fight just figured I'd point that one out, I just thought it was interesting. But not looking so good at the moment. And just more heavy artillery going out from the Russians. Stukes right here in a more. Reserve position. Now again, there's not really much for them to support at the moment, which again is not really helping Spanky at all. He needs to do something to change that. In the meanwhile, he could, you know, try supporting the Panzer on this with a single stool. Oh, he does seem to be running around using the Panzer Werfer. He could also call in some flak mention bombing runs. It looks like we're going to see that right here. And a nicely clumped up Soviet position from T98 tank. And there's absolutely no AA, by the way, from the Russians. And there we go, nice lift off a strike. Gets the veterans, the two conscripts caught. The field gun is not doing too well either. Again, Russians need to be a bit more cautious. And again, get some AA, for heaven's sake. What's the lift off? It will tear you apart. And I mean, a single anti aircraft half tech can actually shoot down an awful lot of Stukas. If you know what you're doing. Oh, then now I do see a heavy panzer court going in there. For support. The third SS in the fight. And meanwhile, Panzer's here going to get all one by conscript. Two conscript squads, including one veteran. He's free with some machine guns. The panzer is just getting chewed up. And forced to run, but will they actually make it out of their line? Oh no, they get hit by Spanky's artillery. Ach du lieber. That's no good. Field guns in combat you need reinforcing. Panzer is moving up, holding up behind the ruins of the Austin Flak Panzer versus a few conscript squads. And a bombing run going up here, almost getting the Pioneer Squad there, but they were quick enough to retreat. Conscripts are definitely not winning this fight against two Panzer squads in heavy cover. All the single two strike right here from Place EK could absolutely cause insane havoc. Firing into the German base again, not very effective. And there we go, the artillery going in against the Panzer, right here behind the Ostfin, forcing them away. Nasty stuff. Western victory point one from falling into the Russian hands. Center, though, being held by the Germans by a very stubborn defense enacted by predators. Barely holding on. Stukes making the advance of Potterberg on this squad in the nearby church. Maxim here just getting absolutely shredded by all the machine guns and main guns from the Stukes. MG42 crew up here. Ooh. Very close, very close. And the MG crew gunner basically going, What does Ura mean? What does it mean? And there we go, we do see an ISU 152 rolling out for T98 tank. That could actually prove to be quite a problem, particularly currently, since all they have are two Stooks to hold back an ISU 152. That can actually prove very, very devastating. But the question is, will the Russians actually use it sensibly? Will they form a force around it and then push forward? Basically forcing away the Germans because, again, the Archie 152 would currently dominate the Germans. I mean, they'd have very little to do it, and a well-supported Archie 152 would be devastating. It would tear for infantry. It would definitely be a problem for the Stooks. And Predators would, again, be very much helpless towards an Archie 152. So again, will they actually do so? Looks like we actually see Spanky pulling his troops into water center to hold up that part of the front as again it is very vulnerable. The intense artillery is really causing some problems for the Germans. So they are forced to use the storm shirts to hold it up in the name of the fatherland. And then we go immediately getting a kill. 10 kills in the Stug. 11 kills. Four men out. 
Bit of an engine damage there, or was it... No, engine damage. MD here getting blasted. Panzers and Gunnadis advancing on the west, although they are very much freezing. Gunnadis almost starts going down. Katusha rockets going down right hand side, very much vulnerable. We're seeing an MD42 hiding in the small wooden cottage as a field gun bombard in the hopes of catching some fascists, but not quite succeeding. Pioneers ready for assignment. And looks like we are seeing the IG-152 in a very much of a surf position again, not pushing forwards, not supporting the infantry. I really think that's a huge missed opportunity right there by the Russians to really do some damage again to predators to the Germans. And looks like a tiger has been called in. The Schwerer SS Panzer Abteilung 103 has been sent in to support the Jordan Gulf. Straving line quickly saved today here by the center line. But the ISU does not follow up in the assault again. Had it been here, it could have been blasting away at the Stoops. But again, there's. Soviets are playing a bit too defensively. His T-98 tank is doing so, and now his place case concepts are getting absolutely murdered here by the Stoops. Mostly the Stoops, in fact, and the MD-42. Bit the Tiger. And there we go. Tiger actually takes a hit from the ISU-152. We are the best machine gun, machine gun Quincy army right there getting match 22. Being tough for the comedy to deal with. Tiger already here with the damage engine due to the heavy shells of the YG 152. Tiger so far has not really any real significant kills. Can't keep flushing out, going to get off an anti tank grenade, I imagine. And there we go, anti tank grenade really hitting the armor. Can't keep flushing out the center. Artillery going in there, looks like to be a fragmented bomb against the field gun, which is finding way at the side of the Tiger. There we go, fragmented bombs murder the field gun crew, sending poor Vasily on the run. Max, the machine gun crew trying to secure the center, but they're getting blasted by the Stook. And again, the ISU 152, if he just moved up a bit close, I could do a bit more, but again. So very passive play with it. Distressingly so, in fact. Distressingly so. And it's actually time to look at Place EK, who's actually got five squadrons from two howitzers. Still not a single guard squad, not a bit of armor, not even a tank destroyer to support its own troops, you know, or support the ISU 152. There's definitely some things lacking right there. Currently, I mean, Spanky's the one probably doing most of the work since again he's got the stuff to do most of the work. Including a couple of Stooks who will soon be veterans who won. More to crew making run for it. And we've seen two veterans in three conscript squads. That is definitely bad news for the Hitlerites. Oh, these are might also get some bad news. Oh! Pioneer squad repairing the. Tiger tank just took a direct hit from the IG-152. Conscripts then were advancing, taking a hit from the Tiger. Tiger takes another hit. Instead, murders the Panzer is trying to support. Advancing up the west side, not quite any success. Panzer is getting glassed a bit. MD-42 supporting here, should be careful, they might fire away both of the Harriters. One already veterans one. And there we go, Pioneers trying to take the point of getting murdered. And also note here, there's a huge gap here again, but again, the Russians are simply not really mounting any solid force again, they're just throwing in units here and there, and it's not really a solid strategy. But again, it's slightly working because again, the Germans are well, basically doing the same. Or at least it did work until Spanky and a rather pulled things together finally. 
with his Tiger and Stooks. As we wanted to continue to do nasty stuff to the Germans. I'm using this house basically functioning like a fortress currently. Or the Ducia Panzer Squad moving out for the assault. Panzer Squad here getting on the other hand murdered. But there we go, flanking the building when they begin to get off a ban grenade. A Gebalte Ladnung. A World War I stormtrooper tactic, in fact. It was also used in World War II earlier on, in fact, in part of the earlier part of the war, also as an anti tank weapon. But there we go, they failed to get off a ban grenade. Instead, they get murdered, shredded, gaining veterancy free for the MG42 crew. Gott im Himmel! Meanwhile, MG4 joining up here. Panzer is doing what they can, but they're down to two men. Mortar's going to go off. Panzer is moving to in. And we see a second RSU 152. If there's any time for them to make an assault, it's bloody well now. Make a coordinate assault. Bun grenade going from the conscripts. Oh, just tears out most of them. Nasty stuff right there. Nasty stuff. We do see the MG42 vacating the premises, having realized they have worn up their welcome. But a lot of chaos, a lot of carnage. And again, the Russians need to conduct an assault. They need to counterattack properly. And again, they've got two Aizu 152s. If they were to use them in a sensible manner with some infantry in front, then they could very likely just breach the Germans' front line. In fact, they could knock out the Stukes and the Tiger on its own versus two Aizu 152s, and then it would be good night, Tiger. But again, that's just not quite happening. And there we go, a nice little counter-attack by the German pans on the west flight. Zach Flank clears out things there again, and no real Russian response, and again, no real coordination of armor, and again, a complete lack from the Russians, he's just coordinating a counter-attack, but really throw back to the Russians. Germans, there we go, we actually seeing an attack from the RG-152. First hit really just takes it down to half felt very quickly. Stu could actually go down, we see an anti-tank grenade. Oh, it goes off the Tiger. But will the RG-152 get it? Will the RG-152 get it again? The other one's also way too slow. And the Stug actually managed to escape. Oh, and again... The Russians really need to get it together. Look at T-98 tank. But not really good at all. Not when you allow a tiger and a stoop to get away. The only problem is they're way too defensively playing right now. This is giving the Germans too much leeway and actually then forming up a defense, or forming up a combat group and then attacking. Which is currently what Spang is actually doing, quite nicely even. And again, there's absolutely no pressure at the moment being really exerted by the Russians. That's really what they should not be doing. At the very least, one should have been keeping up the pressure while another then build up a combat force. But again, now both are going on the defense, which is giving the Germans the time to do what? We are losing supplies to the enemy. Right, their field gun's going to get likely to get flanked. Panzer's though getting murdered here by the Azure 152s. Not really a good move again. Predator's infantry force simply getting chewed up again, lacking its integral support. The enemy has taken our supply sector. Tigers and Stukes going to get repaired. One would imagine. And there you go, Panzer was getting murdered by the RG 152s. But again, the German advance is getting really far now. Spanky and Predators really making great advances. Tiger being pulled back. Looks like the third has been pushed back for now. Can the Soviets quickly regain the territory and again can they conduct either a slightly better defense or counter-attack, thus robbing the Germans of their initiative because time again now, while well, they've been back the, all that, would be a good time to attack and try to do some damage to the Germans. Try and perhaps even force them to commit already damaged units which are not combat effective for time, forcing that damaged tiger into the fight again. But also fun to note that again, no Russian do get quicker. Veteran to overall, I mean, overall the same amount of kills, but again, the Tiger is barely near where even the same IG-1 through 2 is close as Veterans in 1. More artillery going in, bombarding the Panzer Grenadiers. 
artillery firing away. Bombarding. Panzer guns, and there we go. We are going to see Prez again sneaking up here. Nicely done, although. Might not do so much against veterans of the three conscript squad, particularly if it hits the dirt. Stuke here definitely need repairs. Other Stuke pulled into frontline service once more. Note again, the Russians are not really making any great advances again. They're taking it very, you know, okay, we're just taking what we need to do. We're not going to apply more pressure to the junction to do some serious damage again. We're not going to use our heavy assault guns to push in a, you know, a confrontation act. You do some more damage to the Germans when they're in condition, you know, not to really fight it off. Again, it's just not happening. And again, it's really buying the Germans a lot of time to build a force and actually penetrate the Russian lines. Now, again, it would also benefit a bit of the penetrators at least again build up a slightly better force and actually you know conduct some flanking assaults instead of running straight up you know these few lanes straight from the RG-1 from the 2s which will tear up his panzer gun it is as you're sort of cautiously noting and there we go veterans you want for the RG-152 Stug finally getting repaired machine gun right here getting blasted from every side as well Building church might soon collapse. Petrusha getting repaired. No further tank destroys again, though. Absolutely not good. Although Magnum T98 tank might be going for another RG-152. More heavy assault guns, but again, not really using them. Not really using them. And again, they also awfully split up, so they can't really properly support each other, which again could be used by a clever commander. Time to look at predators. Whereas proceed to go more or, le more or less for the doctrine that won't do so much for him. Simply just get Stuka bombing strikes. Again, I think Festung support might have been more, made more beneficial for him. Uh, that should have gone for Jaeger infantry. Oh well. But again, note predators very low in infantry because against all he has is infantry. He's not even getting half tracks. I mean, half tracks could have been an idea to you know quickly motorize his Panzer Gunners. Quickly get them moving from point to point, also quickly dodge things, but again, he's just throwing Panzer gonna at his opponent. Just wasting them. So rather find that a bit lacking. Another string run going in, still no real AA. Now there's just the IG-152 for their machine guns right there. Crashing out behind enemy lines. Lots of bits of Luther all over the place. Tiger making another push, although on its own, it could actually be cool. No, they're too, again, too far apart. I should want to do misses in the first place, but Spanker trying to support an assault. Actually, he's got two Tigers. Definitely a problem again, very much again, the sign of a missed opportunity by the Russians. And looks like we're going to see an assault going in here from the Germans. Infantry, those push great, but the Panzers, the stronger shots. It's advancing. Looks like Spanky's actually going to force the issue. He's committing to an assault, although without infantry support, it could actually go very badly, but at least he's doing so not in a blizzard. Panzer's here, fighting desperately to regain the center. And again, the Irish one for two can't even support here now. And there we go, just crushing their way up the right side and you're going to see this machine gun in a large amount of trouble and there we go the building with the machine gun crew collapses Pioneers following up to gain tap territory Ice one for two moves but the other one's not moving it's remaining there don't send in an assault something like that on its own god in himmel or switch I don't know I'm not really good with Russian swearing. There you go, the IG-1 is actually trying to escape, it looks like. But the assault guns are moving in, the Tiger's advancing. There's still no response from this one. There's no response from the infantry. There's no response to that German armored assault going in. None whatsoever. Oh, dear. That's very much bad news. Company is Squad getting caught right in front of it all. Getting murdered by fascist armor. IG-1 taking several hits to the rear. From the Sturmgeschütz. 
Katusha down, bench 22 for the Stug. Giving an armor skirt, just toughening it up. RU152 needs to get away, needs to turn about though. And this one needs to get up there. For heaven's sake, T98 tank. And again, the right flank was pretty much open sometime then, and there was no. No real anti tank was seeing, strafing runs were seeing, bombing runs were seeing, everything just being locked at the Russians at the moment. Everything but the kitchen sink. And this Duke is also close to getting veterans too. And we're seeing just hordes of conscripts retreating back. Second RG-152 finally arriving, but he might be too late for the first one. Which is now going to lose out to the Stoop, can't give the Stoop's higher rate of fire. Because again, note, I'll just briefly pause to explain that. Due to the rg 152s size of the shell, I mean, the thing is, the shell had to be in two bits, which rather meant a considerably lower rate of fire, because they then had to sort of put in the front bit, and then the propellant bit afterwards. And there go lots of anti-tank grenades getting knocked, but it's not going to do much with the armored skirts up. Tiger finding a veteran G1, Stuck here veteran G2, although both on a tail continues missing a field gun running. We could see the strafing continue holding the hits down. Like you're going to see that half tech upgraded. Field gun ready. Will it be able to knock out the Stuck? Which is actually close to veteran G3. And that would be the first time I actually see a veteran G3. Anything German armored, anything, but no. Field gun might get it. So close. And we're seeing the field. The Howard to just find directly at the Tiger Tank! Absolutely insane armoured fight, there we go! Field gun gets the Stug! Ending in it is prime! Leaving a smouldering wreck of Krupp steel! Tiger also needs to get out of there! And again, I mean, this assault has absolutely forced the Russians to retreat from the front and line predators to actually move in quite safely. So overall, I mean, in terms of overall strategic and tactical success of this assault, I mean, it's actually achieved quite a few things done by damage to the Russians, but at the same time, it also forced the Russians to abandon the front line to really deal with this. So in many senses, I mean, quite an excellent assault. Although he will lose several stoops. But also due to the fact that again, T98 tank doesn't quite seem to know how to use his ICU-152, he actually allows the Tiger tank to escape. Although we do see the Stooks actually, oh, abandon, that would be bad news for the Russians. I mean, the Germans actually. No, not upgrading with an anti-aircraft gun, but it was a shame, although the 50 caliber again, note, just really tears through even Panzer gun ideas. Again, the 50 caliber, very, very nasty anti-infantry weapon. A Tiger allowed to escape. Going over to Spanky. Taking some nasty damage. Down to just three Tigers. RG-152 up again. Field gun moving up. Needs to stop up and just shoot the Tiger. Come on, T-98 tank. Oh, well, you're not paying attention now, are you? Oh, dear. We've seen SU-85, but that's not really moving either. There we go. Anti tank gun crew dead. Really nasty situation going on here. Tiger's caught in several points. It looks like this Tiger will be able to flank the Ash 152. Although anti tank grenade goes off. And we're seeing another bombing run going in. For the field howitzer! Oh dear! Clearing out the crew very quickly! Come on! Oh no! Who shall win this? I mean one more hit to the tiger and that could be it! Nope, destroyed engine! There we go. Either way, the tiger is scrapped now. A 
And it looks like he's just given up here, which is really weird. Kind of is here for Spanky winning to fight. Veteran to free. And the Tiger gets abandoned as well. Stug has not been recruited. Again, another miss there by the German Russians. And just looks like a complete utter collapse right now for them. Everything is falling apart. The Germans have won. Despite a good match early on for the Russians, they absolutely failed to capitalize on it and rather failed to break the stalemate. Instead, it was the Germans that broke it and thus they could do it in a manner more advantageous to them. So, game over there. Third SS Panzer Division was able to break through. 332nd, the Rifle Division failed to contain the assault of the fascists. And of course, I mean, the problem basically was for the Russians and the Germans, basically at one stage it just was one huge skirmish, there was no real order, it was all chaos, fighting here and there, they could never really gather up for an assault. Ultimately, what the Russians should have done, partly as you know, is when they gained the advantage, they should have been mining a lot more, and that never quite happened, and then, you know, when the whole thing was going on, one of them should have gathered for a proper counter-attack, but that again never materialized. Even when they had two ICU-152s, even when the one ICU-152, they should have been attacking, but they didn't and that rather opened up for the Germans then to break the stalemate and doing so in a manner that benefited them and it did partly because again also of the more passive and again not proper usage of the heavy assault guns even of the tank destroyers by the Russians again they need to figure out how to use tank destroyers and assault guns tip it they're not tanks so really some massive problems there for them although they again they were able to hold the flanks nice but again they never fortified them properly for a larger part they should have probably worked on that again mining and again Conducting some proper counterattacks, which again is what the Germans did, and again that one up here really pretty much ended the fight. Since again it rather robbed the Russians of any strategic advantage, any tactical they might have been able to gain, it completely wrecked them apparently again because the Russian response was so utterly slow to it. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. Again, note you know again don't just go for Panzer Gunners. You need something to support them, something to underbuild them. At least a doctrine again, which. Pertus rather failed, which again rather meant that Spanky was rather the one that carried the fight for the larger part, and he did so quite beautifully. So, again, and if you did, you know, send a replay, provide some feedback in the comments, all those things are welcome, and I'll watch you again, you know, feel free to follow on Facebook or Twitter, links are in the description. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.